air traffic control versus pilots. Number 114 Fox shut off a negative, sir. You can't just walk away from me like that. Well, I got more to talk to you about. Coming up. Hey, 7-4 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel, 7-4 Gear, is all about aviation. In this video, we have a pilot that flew straight into a busy airport airspace without permission, and we have a passenger that is probably very thankful they ended up on air traffic control versus pilots and not a vital debris. Let's get into it. Look at this tower, this is 114 Fox Alpha, uh, holding still at runway 25, ready for takeoff. Number four, Fox Shot Alpha, runway 25 Alpha 2, clear for takeoff. Fly westbound. 114, Fox Shot Alpha, uh, fly leftbound, runway approved. I'm guessing this pilot is a new pilot, but even though he's a very new pilot, he did one part exactly like a pro, and that's this part right here. Uh, Okay, jokes aside, the pilot is lacking a little bit of confidence, which is fine. Every new pilot, myself included, lacks confidence on the radio. It's something that a lot of people are nervous about, uh, myself included. I don't know why. It doesn't really matter if you're not great on the radio. You just need to be able to communicate where you're at, where you're going, and then write down or notate or repeat back what they tell you to do. So the one thing that he says is you're clear to take off from Alpha 2, and I just want to show you what they're referring to on that. So it's just something you'll see with the controllers. When you get clear to take off from the full runway, they'll say runway 25. But if you're getting an intersection takeoff, they'll tell you the intersection that you're getting cleared to take off from. It's just a rule that happens. I just wanted to explain it to you in case you didn't know what was going on. Now, the really important thing to understand here is exactly what the pilot read back and what the controller originally said to him. The controller originally told him, go westbound. But the pilot read back, as far as what I can hear, go leftbound. Listen to this. Clear for takeoff. Fly westbound. 114. Fox shot alpha. Uh, fly leftbound. If you're a controller, you could very easily make the assumption that he said westbound, even though the pilot read back leftbound. And from the pilot standpoint, I'm guessing he's a newer pilot, he could be thinking, the guy wants me to go leftbound because there is something in aviation when you're new, you'll make traffic patterns where you'll do your takeoff and landings and a lot of new pilots do these and they have something called left-hand traffic patterns, which means you just take off and just make a bunch of left-hand turns and then that's basically how you get onto the runway. This is a picture here that the controller would say make left traffic. And that just basically means this pilot is just gonna keep turning left and come back around and land, take off and keep making that pattern and that would be a left traffic pattern. Now, while I'm not defending the pilot and not clarifying the situation, I think what he heard was, go left, not west. So he's saying leftbound, but there really is no leftbound in aviation. There's a westbound and a southbound, but there is no leftbound. There's a left traffic, and that's where this whole thing starts to become a problem. To give you some context of where they're at, they're right here in Orlando Executive Airport. And so a pilot taking off on runway 25, which is basically westbound, would be heading in this direction. But if he goes leftbound or south, he's headed straight to this other airport. And this is Orlando International, which is the main airport of Orlando. Now, if you aren't familiar why different runways have different numbers, I'll put a link to the Catch Me If You Can Hollywood versus Reality up here. And if I forget to do that after posting this video, remind me in the comment section. But it explain, I explain more about why the different runways have different numbers. You can see from this picture here, if the pilot were to continue flying west, he would just be heading away from everything. But by heading south, he's going to have a very big problem because this airspace is known as Bravo airspace. Typically your big airports are in a category B airspace, which is what we call a Bravo airspace. And you need permission to fly into that. Those big airports are typically where your airliners are flying in and out of. And so they don't want to have big airliners coming in and landing because we're moving at a much faster pace and a much faster speed than a small single engine aircraft like this our landing speed is gonna be faster than their top speed. So mixing those two together make no sense. It's kind of like if you had a school bike path going to school uh, right next to a freeway and they were kind of using the same traffic lanes. It just wouldn't make sense and there would be a real problem. Same concept. So the controller thinks the pilot's going this way, the pilot thinks he's going this way, and you can see why that's gonna be a problem. But listen what happens next. Number four, Fox Shot Alpha, remain outside the Bravo frequency changes. Actually, November four, Fox Shot Alpha. It looks like you turned south there in the Bravo, sir. I need you to descend immediately uh, at a below 800. I told you to fly westbound. Number four, Fox Shot Alpha, exec tower. Skyhawk 114, Fox Shot Alpha, exec tower. 
Skyhawk 4, Foxtrot Alpha, Exec Tower, you are in the Bravo, sir. I need you to exit the Bravo. If you can hear this transmission, I dent, number 4, Foxtrot Alpha. All right, November 4, Foxtrot Alpha, Exec Tower, if you can hear me, sir, I need you to turn left northbound immediately and descend. You're uh, in the Bravo at 1,600. November 114, Foxtrot Alpha, please repeat, change the flu. Number 114, Fox, shut off. A negative, sir, you can't just walk away from me like that. Well, I got more to talk to you about. Now, this Category B airspace has a different structure than a lot of different airports. Think of like a wedding cake with the different tiers, but upside down. So as you get closer to the airport, they have the airspace all the way to the ground. But as they get further and further away, there's little shelves or tiers. So that's why the controller is saying, hey, you're at this specific altitude. It's not that you just cross the line. It's not just from the ground to 10,000 feet all the way around. They have different little tiers. So he's able to go underneath the Bravo airspace, but not into the Bravo airspace. And that's why he's replying and telling him about his altitude. That's why he's reminding him about this altitude there. So this pilot turned and flew directly into that airspace, which is obviously not allowed. But this controller, while continuing to radio to get a hold of that pilot, continued to handle all of the planes that were going on in his airspace. I deleted all that because it would have made the video too long, but I just want to show you that this pilot is creating a real situation and the controller is continuing to try to radio to him while juggling all of his normal traffic because he thought that guy was going to be leaving his airspace. At the very beginning, he said frequency change, he was going to switch him over. Frequency change approved is what he was going to say. Listen right here. Number four, Fox Shot Alpha, remain outside the Bravo. Frequency change is actually. In that case, when he says frequency change approved, had he continued to say that, that pilot would have switched over to another controller and that controller that you hear talking right now would have been done with him. So he expected for that plane to be leaving his airspace and not have to worry about it. Now he really has to worry about it because he needs to get a hold of them to get them out of going into Orlando International Airport there. So he's handling that guy who's making the problem and his normal traffic. Now, if you aren't familiar with this term, if you can hear this transmission, I dent number four, Fox Shot Alpha. What that means is that if the pilot can hear the controller but can't transmit for whatever reason, his radio isn't working to allow him to transmit, he can hit a button on his plane and that will show up on the controller's screen. So the controller knows that the pilot can hear him but is not able to transmit. Then the pilot can follow the control or follow the instructions from the controller and the controller knows that he's unable to transmit but he can hear him. So when he tells him this, Sir, I need you to turn left northbound immediately. He's telling the pilot, make a 180, fly away from this airspace and back towards my airspace where he has control of everything. He's trying to avoid from this pilot getting really close to the airport there and possibly shutting down all the takeoffs and landings that are going on into Orlando International, which you can imagine would be a real mess because there's a lot of traffic that's taking off and landing in there. But then the pilot jumped in and said this. November 114, Fox Alpha, frequency change approved. Now that transmission from the controller about doing the frequency change was a while ago. So he obviously heard that, or maybe he heard that, and he was just trying to hope that this situation went away. I think he was confused of where he was at, where he was going. He was doing the leftbound and then realized, oh, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And then, okay, frequency change approved, hoping it just kind of like would go away. And the controller was laughingly saying like, no, it's just not that easy. The negative, sir, you can't just walk away from me like that. Well, I got more to talk to you about. All the screens that the controllers have are recorded. And obviously all the transmissions are recorded just like what you're hearing now. And it's not the first time that a student pilot flew into the wrong airspace, but the next part is different than some of the previous videos that I've gone over. Listen to this. November 114, Fox Alpha, having problems with my radio. Give me a second, trying to fix it. Yes, sir, I understand that. So do you need any assistance? November 114, Fox Alpha, repeat that again. Do you need assistance, sir? You just, uh, you just dusted the... Bravo shelf at 1700 and uh, I was trying to get a hold of you for the last 10 flying miles. I need to know if you're all right out there. November 114, Fox Star Alpha. Yeah, I've just been working on my radio. I apologize about that. Um, I'm, everything is all right right now, but thank you. All right, I need you to give me a call here. When you, Where are you headed today? I'm heading to Brooksville, KB, K Bravo, Kilo, Victor. Number four, Fox Shot Alpha, Roger. I need I need you to write down a number when you have a second, okay? November one one four, Fox Shot Alpha. Go ahead. Yeah, just give us a call. I just want to talk to you and see what happened because I understand your radio's out, but you took a hard left turn and climbed into that delta. We just need to talk about that, sir. Okay? You just get to your destination safe and give us a call so we can just talk about it. All right? 
Now, I don't know what the phone call sounded like. This isn't like the Harrison Ford where I have the phone call audio to talk about what happened, but this controller is remaining super calm with everything that's going on. And the pilot, even though he's making an excuse about how this all happened, he's not being a brat about it. There's a big difference. You mess up and everybody knows pilots are human, just like everybody else, we make mistakes. But he's not being a brat, he's not being entitled, he's just saying, oh, this was the problem. Does that problem, does that excuse make up for the mistake that he made? No, he's still gonna have to talk to some people about it. But he's not being a brat about it, which means his, his experience when he's talking with the FAA or the controller on the phone is going to be a lot different than when you have a pilot who's acting like a total brat, like you've heard in some of the previous videos. Now this guy is in a small plane that's flying pretty slow and he is going for the last 10 miles, the controller said. So this guy is flying maybe a mile a minute and you can imagine that if you're flying a mile a minute, it's probably about 10 minutes that this pilot is flying away from the controller and into that airspace. So the controller was working on this for a while to get this guy to actually respond to him. Now, if you're the FAA and you get all this documentation of what's going on, which they would get, they would look at everything, they would listen to the audio, they would listen to the pilot, they would listen to the controller, they would evaluate all the information. And the reason they're doing that is to see what caused this situation? What was the reason this happened? Obviously everything ended out okay, nobody died, nobody got hurt, no planes almost crashed or anything dramatic, but they wanna see what caused this situation so that way they can prevent it from going on. The reality is, is that the, the Fed, the FAA, their, their main thing is to look and evaluate the information so they can prevent things from continuing to happen. They say a lot of aviation lessons are learned in blood, but you can learn from this situation of what caused it and how do we prevent it because there, there wasn't a problem, there wasn't a, a major dramatic outcome that happened, but they can learn from it to prevent it from happening again. And then they'd also listen to the controller and how the controller was interacting with this pilot. And they did something really good that I wish a lot of controllers did when they were dealing with new pilots. And that's this part right here. So we just need to talk about that, sir, okay? You just get to your destination safe and give us a call so we can just talk about it, all right? The controller did an amazing job, in my opinion, keeping calm because he knows this pilot is gonna be rattled. He knows this pilot that is going to realize that he messed something up. Once you get the phone number, you never wanna get the phone number, but once you get that phone number, it's you know that you're gonna be rattled. But he's trying to keep this guy calm because he knows that this pilot still is flying to his other airport, Brooksville. He's trying to keep him relaxed so he doesn't have a problem. Hey man, not a big deal. We're gonna safely, you know, safely get there. Give us a call. We just want to talk about it. He's not doing a, oh, you're busted, man. You're in a lot of trouble. Blah, blah, blah. He's not really amping that pilot up to make him feel stressed out on this whole flight that he has to do. The pilot's gonna be nervous. He knows the pilot's gonna be nervous until he lands, but he's trying to keep him as calm as possible with everything that's going on. This is like rule number one of aviation: aviate, navigate, and communicate. And this guy wasn't doing that. The pilot was so busy focused on what was going on with his radio, if, if that was really a thing, he was so focused on that, he forgot to do number two, navigate, which was to go west, not left. I think what happened is he actually got confused with the left and west, but either way, he said that the problem was the radio. But remember, aviate, fly the plane first, navigate, where are you going, and then communicate. So the whole thing about talking with air traffic control, you can see if he didn't respond to air traffic control but was flying west, it would have been a lot less of an issue than flying south into that Bravo airspace and saying, oh, I was busy working on my radio. Okay, well, well that should be the third priority. The second priority is going west, not south. You should have known you should have been going into that airspace. Now, the other day there was a four-man crew. We were flying from Europe somewhere into Miami. And when we were coming in, this four-man crew, three of the people, three of these pilots heard one thing and one of the pilots heard another thing. And my rule always when I'm flying is that if not all of us hear the exact same thing, then we're gonna call back and clarify. And that's something that as a newer pilot, I didn't wanna do because I felt like, oh, that sounds unprofessional, like you didn't hear it right the first time. But you'll never get in trouble for clarifying. It might annoy your controller, but you'll never get violated for it. Don't be scared to ask for a clarification. Uh, we do it all the time. I've heard pilots, I've heard controllers get annoyed with pilots when we do it, but I don't really care because I can't get in trouble for that. Had this pilot said, confirm you want me to go left? You want me to make a left and just fly south? Had that pilot said that, that he could have avoided this entire thing. But instead, he assumed that the guy said leftbound, even though that doesn't make sense. Had they clarified, it would have been not an issue. So if you ever aren't sure, ask. 
Keep asking until you know what that thing is. I recently had a flight where I was actually leaving the flight deck. I was getting ready to get out and get into rest. My headset was still plugged in. The captain had plugged in and, and relieved me. And the other first officer was up there. And I had my headset plugged into one of the back radios. And we were over France. And the French controller had a very thick accent when he was talking. And he was giving us a, a new fix and a new frequency. So neither of them or me could understand what exactly he was saying, what frequency he was saying and what fix he was saying. So we asked him three different times and all three of us were trying to listen to what he was saying to figure out the fix and the frequency that this, this controller was trying to give us. And we just kept asking until we got the right thing and got it clarified and looked at it on our map and it made sense. Did the controller get annoyed? I don't really care because I never got violated and there was never any paperwork to do. Just realize asking three or four times might take 10 or 15 seconds out of your day and it might take 10 or 15 seconds out of their day, but it's gonna be a lot less work by you getting that clarification than you having to fill out a lot of paperwork for doing something wrong. Now I know this was a long video, but I had a funny one that someone sent to me, so we're gonna do that one right now. Tower United 23 or four, we just got work from the flight attendant. Somebody got up and went to the restroom. Oh, that's a terrible time for that. 23 or four, cancel, take off, switch, hold in position and get them back in their seats. Oh, they're in the seat, it's not the right one. <laughs> okay, Korean 026 Heavy, cross to a left, cross to a right, turn right on Charlie. This United Aircraft was given takeoff clearance, and then when they said that, that somebody was sitting there, their takeoff clearance was canceled, and that's what the controller was saying, takeoff clearance canceled. So he's saying that, which basically means you're no longer allowed to take off. That's what he's saying right here. 2304 cancel take off clearance, hold in position, and get them back in their seat. Now the one thing I'm going to say about this, and I'm guilty of it too, but don't go to the bathroom as soon as you get on the plane. Those 20 minutes that you spend like hovering outside your gate and blocking other people that are boarding before you, that whole time that you spend there and then racing down and then get into the line to get onto the plane, that whole time could be spent going to the bathroom right there at the terminal, just a couple feet away. Nice and spacious, uh, plenty of room in there, and, and you could go spend that time going in there. Plane's not gonna leave without you. We're not gonna board in five minutes. So just, just my personal thing, and all the flight attendants are going to love you or just not be annoyed by you from blocking and, and interrupting the boarding process by fighting upstream or go, going all the way to the back and using that bathroom and then having to fight all the way upstream and interrupt the whole boarding process. I've boarded over 400 people before on my aircraft, and granted this was a, a military, military thing, but we boarded 400 and something people faster than seeing 120 people get on a regular commercial airline because people are going to the back and going to the front, putting their bag up, getting up, getting down, and it just makes the process very slow. So if you go to the bathroom before you get on the plane, it's gonna make the boarding process a lot smoother. If you wanna see some more air traffic control versus pilot, check out this video here. And if you wanna see some pilots who are struggling to fly their plane, check out this video up here. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.